welcome back to Mechanical Pros. Hey, hit that like, hit that subscribe. Today, we're gonna, we're gonna jump into how to check out a dual capacitor. Brian, tell me what we're looking at here. Yeah, so what I've got here is a dual capacitor, 35 microfarad plus five, meaning I've got um, three terminals on this, one a common, one for my compressor and one for my condenser fan motor. So hence a dual capacitor, it'll, it'll do two different uh, power sources, compressor or fan motor. So first of all, we're gonna talk about, we're gonna talk about how to test them, right? This is a brand new one and we'll show you how to test it, but talk real quick about what to look for that's gonna make you suspicious of the capacitor has failed. You run a service call, you get out there, you know, the, the compressor's coming, the fan's not coming on, or vice versa. The condenser fan runs, compressor's not coming on. First thing you wanna do is just visually check the capacitor. When a capacitor has failed, most times, you'll just be able to see it by looking at it. The top of this will dome up because there's a fluid in there that's gonna start to swell up as that capacitor fails. So look to see if the capacitor is misshaped. Typically the top will start to dome and crest or if you walk and you see fluid on it, that's the dielectric fluid inside the capacitor. It is cracked, it is leaking. It may still be functional, but you better change that capacitor because it's about to go. So there's a couple really easy you know, visuals. You walk up, you're doing a PM, you're running a basic service call, you know, you see it, maybe it's still operational, but if you notice something visually that looks like that compressor is swelling up, go ahead, let that customer know, change that capacitor for them, keep a happy customer. So we'll talk about how do you test the capacitor, right? So you walk up to it, first you gotta have a multimeter, you gotta have a multimeter capable of checking capacitance. So your little microfarad symbol right there for checking capacitance on a capacitor. And first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna short the capacitor. Um, Many years ago, back in the day, these would hold a charge for a long time and be dangerous. That's not really the purpose. We're shorting across these terminals. It's just to make sure we get an accurate reading on our meter. If it's holding any little bit of voltage in there, it's gonna kind of throw our reading off. And the best way to do it, just take an insulated screwdriver, short across the terminals. You don't, no risk of getting hurt or anything, but you wanna do it just so you get an accurate test. And next thing we're doing, now that we've set our meter to test the, the microfarads on the capacitor, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go across the common terminal, then we're gonna go to fan, we're gonna go across common, then we're gonna go to the herm symbol, meaning a hermetic compressor. So here we go on our common terminal, then we will go to our fan. Now you wanna hold this down firmly for about five seconds, and then you should get a reading. Boom, it says 4.98. Well, I know I've got a good capacitor because on my data tag on the capacitor, it says my fan capacitor is five microfarads, plus or minus 5%. Well, I'm at 4.98, I'm well within plus or minus 5%. I know my fan terminal's good. Now I'll do the same procedure and check my compressor side. From common to compressor, hold it down tightly for about five seconds. This is a 35 microfarad capacitor and it's 35.2. That's good. Now, if, say if that was reading 32, that would be less than 5%, probably gonna be time to change that capacitor. So just keep that in mind. Even if you're getting a close reading, if it's right on the edge, you know, just worst case scenario, let the customer know so they know to expect that and prepare for it. You're not doing them a service by not telling them what they need to look for down the road. They may not choose to fix it right away, that's their decision, but as long as you've let them know that. Hey, Brian, tell me, mm -hmm. am, I, am I gonna be able to tell how to land my compressor and my fan without Absolutely. a micrometer? Great question. On the top of this, very hard to see, especially for me, because I don't have my glasses on, there's a terminal marked C, there's, it's marked fan under that terminal, and this other one says H-E-R-M for HERM. So that's a great question. Yeah. That's how you know. You know, if you walk up to it, maybe somebody's butchered it, there's no wiring diagram, whatever. Great way, follow your wires back from your condenser fan motor, land them on fan, same thing for compressor. And it's, it's just that easy. Most common item that fails on residential split systems yeah. or package unit, any single phase type of gear, that's your most common thing that's gonna fail on you. Cheapest part on the unit, but fails the most often. Yeah. So. It's gonna keep your compressor from starting, it's gonna keep Absolutely. it from, from, from turning. That's right. All right. And if you've got an, a system, Typical residential stuff, they don't have pressure switch safeties. So if this fan terminal fails and my condenser fan's not running, my compressor sit there gonna, and gonna cook. It may, the windings may open on it a couple times, but eventually now this $15 part is potentially cost somebody a couple thousand bucks. Mm -hmm. So very critical. 
All right. Well, thanks, Brian. Hey, hope that was helpful for you. If it was, hit that like, hit that subscribe, and check us out for, uh, for our next video.